No, it is unnecessary. There's nothing left at all. I have to close. Oh, what misery. You ain't from round here. You shouldn't stay here. It ain't healthy. This shop has been looted. Here's the public dispensary that we're looking for. Good day. Please excuse us. Oh, Grant, is it you? Yes, but wait a moment. Watson, it's been years. Since the Faculty of Medicine, if my memory serves me right. Yes, we were young and ambitious. <laughs> I didn't expect to find you here. I thought you had gone to America. No, I find that I prefer the filth here, amputating gangrenous legs. Ah, <laughs> I'm joking, Watson. Unfortunately, I was unable to leave for Washington. I had to give up surgery. So instead, I crouched down in this rat hole, rubbing shoulders with the world's misery. Grant, treating those in need is a noble calling. You underestimate the importance of your work. If you say so. It's true that in the beginning I felt as you do, but as time goes by, the more this cursed area seems like hell. You think that nothing can get worse, and the next day you see that it can. Now famine has hit these poor wretches. One can't always do as one might prefer when one is a doctor. Grant, I'd like to introduce you to Sherlock Holmes. Pleased to meet you. Well, no one comes here by chance, therefore I imagine that you need something in particular. How can I help you? Dr. Grant, we are in possession of a scalpel which was found in an unusual location. Does it come from your dispensary, as we believe? From its mark, I'd say it was stolen from us. A lot of things disappear from here, you understand? Life is hard in Whitechapel. When the staff find a way of adding to their salary, they rarely hesitate to do so. Thank you, Doctor. Farewell, Doctor. See you soon, perhaps. And take care of yourself. This stove is hardly working. That would explain the damp around here. Incredible! My colleague could at least keep a good fire going for his patients. Like all the sick lying here, this person is very quiet. Not surprising, Holmes, this person is too weak. She's obviously suffering from malnutrition, and for more than a few weeks now. Closed. How can I help you? circulating soup kitchen.
Sorry, the market is closed. There's no more produce. Flowers, my lord, for your dear departed. This cemetery is the very image of Whitechapel. Sinister, frightening, and ill-kept. What a terrible place for one's final rest. At least hunger no longer gnaws at them. Let us see if the elements analysed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. Granite. Granite. Black paint. The same black paint covers these stones. These stones are of the same granite. This black painted stone is identical to the fragments found in the rope which we analysed at Baker Street and in the footprints of the Bishop of Knightsbridge's murderers. This must be the gravedigger's cabin. Well, judging by the state of this place, they don't work very often. Let us see if the elements analysed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. Black and damp earth. Earth freshly turned over, still damp. This dark, damp earth is the same type as that which was found at the Bishop of Knightsbridge's home. It came from a grave then. <laughs> what a lovely thought. Holmes, the man from the soup kitchen isn't only in voluntary service. Look! A money game. Oi, oi! We're giving out free soup after mass, right here. Don't hesitate. Come get yours. All thanks to Prince Woodville's kind generosity. A ticket for a hot bowl of bacon soup. Excuse me, my good fellow. You don't look like the needy. We're not here for the soup. We're merely passing through. But I would like to commend you for your good charity. Ah, it's the Prince of Woodville who's the charitable one. All I'm doing is filling the bowls. For the first time ever in this area, someone's thinking of the poor people here. Look around you, at every street corner. 
You'll find someone giving out soup, just like me. I grew up here, and I can promise you, it's the first time the Toffs have thought about us. And no one tries to take advantage of this? No, mister, that's not possible. You have to exchange a ticket against a bowl. The tickets have the day's date on them, and are handed out after mass. That way no one can cheat. This shovel belongs to the cemetery workers. A leaflet for the soup kitchen. This leaflet is dated for the day after tomorrow. The tickets for the soup kitchen are given out on the same day. Only somebody who works there could have written on it. Let us see if the elements analyzed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. This rope is only worn on one side. This rope is only worn on one side. The rope used to tie up the Bishop of Knightsbridge came from this cemetery. It is only worn on the one side because it is used to lower coffins into graves. Everything coincides, Watson. The fragments of granite at the Bishop's home came from the tombstones of this cemetery. As well as the rope that was used to restrain the poor man. One of those used to lower the coffins. I can think of only two reasons why anyone should happen to spend a great deal of time in a cemetery. Either he is at rest here, or he works here. At least one of the bishop's murderers is employed here. A shame. If he was at rest here, it would have made our job easier. Possible to open it. Holmes, the man from the soup kitchen isn't only in voluntary service. Look! A money game. Are you going to leave me alone? Can't you see I'm busy? A bowl of good bacon soup isn't for you, gentlemen. We're looking for two people called Grape Ape and Kurtz. Do you know them? Can't you see I'm giving out soup? You again! You can't have any soup, you're too rich! It's for the poor, not the toffs! And what would you say to relieving two toffs of their wallets by giving them a chance at dice? <laughs> With great pleasure! What do you want to bet? Your ring against my friend's superb silver watch. Holmes! I inherited this watch from my brother. It has a great sentimental value. Watson, show your watch to our friend here. Done. Make yourselves at home. All right, mister. First who gets 36 points wins.
without success, Holmes. Perfect. Are you going to leave me alone? Can't you see I'm busy? We win. Hey, not so fast. We'll play a game. Out of the question. You have lost. You owe me your ring. Oh, it means a lot to me, this ring. My dad gave it me before he died. He choked on his own glass eye. My mum didn't get over the shock of it. And she killed herself by smashing her head open with her wooden leg. And she'd only just heard that my sister, who's a prostitute, had caught an embarrassing disease that made all her hair fall out. And worse, <laughs> our dog got run over when he... As this ring holds such sentimental value for you, I will allow you to keep it. What would you say to exchanging that against some information about Grape Ape? That seems like a fair deal, don't you think? <laughs> Grape Ape works with us. He usually deals with the tickets, but we haven't seen him for a few days. Where is he usually to be found? Well, last time I saw him, he was with his mates from the dispensary. Then that deal with the mall. Now, that's all I know. It is quite good enough. Keep your ring, my good man, as a souvenir of your poor father. A souvenir of me dad, me mum, me sister, and me dog. One further thing. You said that Grape Ape's friends work at the morgue. Which morgue? The morgue at the dispensary. I must say, they got a funny job. They wash the dead, dress them, cut their hair. They clean the blood off the floor, chase the rats, stamp on the cockroaches. Mister, I can tell you, I prefer giving out soup. There isn't a certain Kurtz amongst the employees. Listen, we didn't play for info about the whole city. I'm not telling you anything else. The dispensary has got its own morgue. Interesting. Well, yeah, I just told you so. It's the one that all the undertakers prefer. Think about it. It's just next to the cemetery. Thank you, my good man. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye, mister. Closed. How can I help you? Tell me, Doctor, do you have a morgue in your dispensary? Yes, it is the busiest place in the building. We would like to see it. The door at the far end. The one with the unpleasant smell. Very good. Farewell, Doctor. See you soon, perhaps. And take care of yourself. Look, Holmes, a list of the recently dead. How sad. Hmm, I see names that have something in common.
I understand now why my colleague keeps quiet about his morgue. This place is a real mess. Concentrate, Watson. We must look for clues about Grape Ape's friends. Look at the state of the instruments. They've probably never been cleaned. This is Kurtz's overall, so he really does work at the morgue. Strange that he left his overall here. Holmes, this is Kurtz. We've just found one of the Bishop of Nicebridge's murderers. I need something. I need something. A small metal stem. Two keys. Well, well. This Kurtz was carrying a lot of things. Perfect. There is a hole in this padlock. It's open. Here, this hut is on the map. Let us search it from top to bottom, Watson. Oh, what a jumble. Impossible to open it. Impossible to open it. Filled with nails. There are a lot of them. Well, really. I can see a large crack. I'll need something thin. A hole was drilled a short while ago. There is a sack inside this hole. Let us see what is inside it. Bags filled with nails. There are a lot of them. Well, really. Thank you. 
We are making headway. How do we know what this means? This message confirms that we are on the right track. Valuable objects, but what are they doing here? How is it that there is no room in this cemetery? Let us hope that the tree is still there. Here is our tree. Let us examine the inscriptions. Sally and John. This design was the last to be done. Sally and John is engraved here as a symbol of their love. Yes, it must be there. I need something. This shovel belongs to the cemetery workers. You frighten me, Holmes. This must be the grave. Dig quickly, Watson. Very well, Holmes. Look, a metal box. The lock on this box is rather sophisticated. This box comes from a bank. The criminals must have held onto it after a hold-up.
there we are. It is simplicity itself. This key must be important to be hidden here. These candlesticks are undoubtedly stolen. A hammer covered in blood. Holmes, there is someone in that hut. I saw Watson. Come and keep your revolver at the ready just in case. Open up. We're not the police. Do not be alarmed. That's a strange way of reassuring someone. Holmes, they are children. My God, one of them is hurt. What do you want? Don't come any closer. Are you the police? Don't be afraid. I am a doctor. I'm going to look at your friend's wound. Wait, Watson. I've got some questions to ask these children. This is urgent, Holmes. In this filthy place, the risk of infection is very high, and the wound could get worse with every second lost. The immediate danger for these children is not so much the wound as Mr. Fletcher. Who? Look at the wound, Watson. It's thin and precise. It was made by a sharp, well-kept blade. Any other blade, less well-kept, would have torn the tissue around it, and its size would be irregular. So what does that imply? In this area, who would take such great care with a blade? A butcher, of course. And the only butcher in the area is Samuel Fletcher, who at this moment is replacing a window that has been forced open. He's a man to hold grudges, as anyone around here will tell you. The children are in danger. A man as skillful with a knife as a butcher, and with a bad reputation to match, could easily strike a fatal blow by cutting the child's jugular. If he hasn't done it, it's surely because these little thieves broke into his shop at night to steal a piece of meat. The poor lighting in this area saved them. I can assure you that Mr. Fletcher has spent the day trying to trace these children, and if he finds them, wounds will be the least of their problems. That's... that's true. What do you want? Don't let the butcher find us. I could give Mr. Fletcher a compensation for the damage to his property, and he would certainly give up trying to find you then. But for that, you'll have to cooperate. Or else? Or else he'll likely find a less agreeable way of repairing the damage. Wait, mister. I know everyone here. I'll help you. Only protect us from the butcher. I am looking for Kurtz. Tell me where I can find him, and I'll smooth things over with Mr. Fletcher. Everyone here knows Kurtz. He's the worst person in the area. We call him the Colonel because he fought against the Zulus in Africa. He got chucked out of the army because he's completely crackers. He lives at number eight, Batty Street. Good. Watson, see to the wound. Then we will settle the problem between these young men and Mr. Fletcher. We must protect these children from that butcher, Holmes. It won't be necessary. I've had dealings with Samuel Fletcher before now. He's not the monster I've made him out to be. If he had wanted to kill them, he would have done so, even in dim light. By wounding the little thief, he wanted to warn him never to set foot in his shop again. Forget Mr. Fletcher, Watson. You... you mean you lied to frighten those poor children? Exactly. Clever wasn't it? Well, mister, that's a mighty fine outfit you're wearing there. You stand out like a sore thumb, and that's no lie. Watch that you don't get it all dirtied up, but you'd be welcome to come back to my place. It's not far, and I'd sponge it down for you. <laughs> don't go back to Jenny's place. <laughs> You'll get malaria. <laughs> 
thank you, madam. I'm certain that you would make a very good job of it. Uh, that will not be necessary, however. Uh, but your thought was a kind one. We had best be leaving now, sir. Here, please accept this sovereign as a token of my gratitude for your concern. Well, I never. Thank you. That's right generous of you, my uh, lordship. You are very welcome, madam. Madam, he calls me. Bless my garters. What a gent. If you're ready now, sir. Yes, let us go. What a remarkable man, the Prince Woodville, to talk to such a woman as though she was an equal. Let's find Batty Street. Closed. My God, Holmes, it's appalling. And the smell. But what can have happened here? Stay calm, Watson. Take note of every detail and be careful not to move anything. Very well, Holmes. Someone wrapped some meat up in this newspaper. The blood is still fresh. This is yesterday's newspaper. Grapes! What are they doing there? An old photo. It's written to our comrade Jeremy Kurtz from Commando J. Milan, Bloemfontein, 1883. Kurt served as a Boer commando. He fought against his country. What a horrible wound. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. The skin was deeply torn. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. Only a dog could inflict so deep a wound, but it appears that the wound was gnawed at afterwards. It is a dog bite. I can see the tooth marks. This bandage is a day or two old, no more. This bandage is a day or two old, no more. What terrible wounds! The dogs must have been rabid. 
This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed. Yet the death is recent. This bandage is a day or two old, no more. Please take note, Watson. The same finger that we found at the Bishop of Knightsbridge's house. Holmes! This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed. Yet the death is recent. What a horrible wound. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. The skin was deeply torn. What a horrible wound. Size 9. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. A military badge of the 58th Infantry Regiment of Her Majesty and a letter stipulating Kurtz's exclusion from the unit. He served in 1881. At that time, the regiment served in South Africa. Kurtz was in the Boer War. A newspaper covering the war in South Africa. Kurtz must have been following the war with some interest. The Boer War is abominable, and it still rages. A torn piece of a letter. It seems to be a letter of dismissal. Apparently, our friend Kurtz served in both camps in South Africa and was never a colonel, but that doesn't surprise me. A traitor, deserter, and a false colonel. What a charming gentleman. The dog's bowl is empty. Someone brought food for the dogs, probably just before the fight broke out. And just after they had been fed, they attacked a man to eat him. Incredible! The material on this tray is rather odd. Small burnt balls. A small burner. A pipe with a strange smell. 
There can be no doubt. Judging by the material on the tray and the pipe, the man smoked opium. Opium? I doubt if this man could have made his drug here. He would have needed a real laboratory. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. My deduction chart is incomplete, Holmes. We are missing an important detail. Let's return to the clinic and ask if our friend might lend us his morgue for two hours. What are you going to do? I'm torn between a nap and a picnic. Oh, I've had enough, Holmes. The next step of our investigation, Watson, leads us inevitably to a post-mortem. As you're well aware, in the instance where a body's vital organs no longer function, every minute is vital. Be quick now, and procure the room, while I arrange the transport. Very well. I will see you later. Ah, Grant, you are still here. I need to ask a favour from you. What sort of favour, my dear friend? Might I use your morgue for a couple of hours? It concerns an affair of the greatest imp... Use the morgue? Whatever for? Letting you poke your nose in everywhere is one thing, but closing my eyes to I don't know what unsavoury practices. No, it's nothing like that. No, it isn't possible, sorry. Grant, listen to me. I... Don't insist. Where do you think you are? Perhaps because you come from the rich area, you think you are entitled to do whatever you like. But here in Whitechapel, it's the real world, you understand? The real world, where we have to take risks. Do you even know what that means? And this shabby health centre where I've been stagnating for years, it's a public establishment under my authority, for whatever that's worth. I'm responsible for it. Responsible, do you understand? Of course I understand, Grant. Good. I understand, first and foremost, that you are a coward. What? A coward, I said, sitting on your backside behind a desk for years, complaining about your fate without even trying to change a single thing about it. I won't allow you. And you dare to talk to me about risks. I, who was wounded in Afghanistan while in Her Majesty's service, and who for a great many years has taken part in some of the most dangerous criminal investigations the country has ever known. But... As for being responsible, as you call it, it begins with doing your job properly, particularly when one is a doctor and caring for the poorest people within our society. I... The real life? Ha <laughs> ha! Don't make me laugh. I am a doctor too, Grant, don't forget. And I am ashamed of my profession when I see the state of this centre. It's not my... So, your disgusting morgue, you are going to allow me to use it, dear friend, because I urgently need it for a vitally important affair that is way over your head, and whether it pleases you or not. Understood? If you want to be like that about it, do whatever you like. I wash my hands of the entire thing. That doesn't surprise me. This is a dismal place. Have you ever carried out a post-mortem, Holmes? It requires a great deal of precision. Don't worry, I learn quickly. Hand me a bone saw. Go carefully, Holmes, even so.
I must clean the body first. I must mark the places to cut. No, it is unnecessary. My notches are ready. I can't do that. I can't do that. A ball of paper swallowed recently. I can't do that. 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 No, it is unnecessary. I can't do that. This liquid found in the lungs should be able to tell us something. Chemistry material. And smells as bad as the one in our sitting room at Baker Street. This liquid found in the lungs should be able to tell us something. Poison, and apparently...
That was a most instructive post-mortem. This man was murdered by his accomplices because of his missing finger. I see. He was overly conspicuous walking around with a bandaged hand, as the police would have been looking for a man with a missing finger. But how did they manage to disguise the murder by making it look like a dog attack? The post-mortem revealed the presence of poison in his system. Everything points to it being a less potent form of the poison we found in the bishop's rooms. This man died as much from the poison as from fighting against those animals. I believe this new version of the substance provokes such a rage that the victim attacks anything in his path, and in this instance it was dogs. We're dealing with sorcerer's apprentices whose creations are ever-evolving. They are attempting to obtain a particular effect, and they try out their formulae on human guinea pigs. You're saying that his accomplices forced him to drink it? No, he took it himself, voluntarily. The poison wasn't to be found in his blood, but in his lungs. I also discovered numerous traces of opium. I'm beginning to see. They mixed this horrible poison with his opium, knowing that he would soon smoke it to ease the pain caused by his wound. Exactly. And such a profound knowledge of both chemistry and toxicology is uncommon. Very well. We know the reason and the manner, but we're really not any further ahead. How will we find the two other men who murdered the bishop? By going to 13 Burner Street. It is in this area. But where did you get that address, Holmes? From his stomach. I see. He wanted to get rid of the address. No, he wanted revenge. I don't follow you. When the man with the missing finger began to feel the effects of the poison, he knew that he was going to die, and he knew that there would be a post-mortem. Shall we go? There's our opium den, Watson. Let's go. Good day, gentlemen. Welcome. What can I do for you? One of your regular clients looked within himself to give us your address. He was very helpful. Oh, I understand. Our clients quickly become regulars. Your friend isn't with you? Sadly, no. He is tied up with his dogs. I understand. I too love dogs. Come in and make yourselves at home. The keys to the establishment are all here together. Interesting. Poor devils. See, Holmes, the ravages caused by such artificial pleasure. Poor devils! See, Holmes, the ravages caused by such artificial pleasure. Closed. It's not allowed here. Go on a bit further. Well, we have searched everywhere apart from two rooms. One of these rooms interests me particularly. You are thinking of the guarded room, aren't you, Holmes? I am indeed. But we should not consider any confrontation with the guard. Let us be discreet and enter the adjoining room. It's locked. 
and it wouldn't be very discreet if we were to force it. Nevertheless, we do need to get in there. And the manager? Let us find a way of distracting his attention. Ashes. It's not very clean here. Mm, jasmine tea, judging by the aroma. Poor devils! See, Holmes, the ravages caused by such artificial pleasure. Poor devils! See, Holmes, the ravages caused by such artificial pleasure. Dirty water. This bowl is used to wash smoking tools. Holmes, you talked about making a client sick, but you were exaggerating. Surely you aren't going to force someone to drink. Another of our differences, my friend. You cure people, I make them sick. What's the matter? Are you ill? Hey, mister! It'll be all right. Breathe! The Chinese waiter is busy. We can go. I can only take one key, otherwise the receptionist will notice that something is missing. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Watson, put the key back in its place before the manager notices that it's missing. I shall be quick. I managed to return the key without being seen. Perfect. Let's go in. Phew! What a stink! This bottle is full of barbiturate acid. We use it in medicine sometimes as a tranquilizer. This small opening gives onto the guarded room. Holmes, shh, listen. 
Yeah, but that's different. I don't mind getting money for killing, but he was a sort of pope or something. And we didn't even get... Yeah, I know. I got nice rich man's boots. They must be worth about 20 pounds. But even so, and the boss ain't happy. And when I see him unhappy, I'm afraid. I don't fancy ending up like Kurtz. Perhaps you're right. But we'll have a chance to make up for it. We just have to get it right this time. Because he won't forgive us so easily next time. They are the Bishop's murderers, Holmes. The fiends. Calm down, Watson. We'll have to take care of the guard at the entrance. I think we should be able to find something in this place that would put an elephant to sleep. Very good. But then what? Then we take care of those two devils. Phew! What a stink. This bottle is full of barbiturate acid. We use it in medicine sometimes as a tranquilizer. A syringe that could be useful. Small balls of opium. I'll take a spoonful. This bill hook is very thin and solid. This stick will serve as a weapon or for something else. A ventilation window. I need something. Holmes, do you really think that this is the appropriate moment? Don't worry, Watson. My mind only requires stimulation when it is unoccupied. That is not the case at the moment. I am merely heating these opium balls to obtain a liquid solution. You have a potentially very powerful sedative there, Holmes. Be careful, such a dose could be lethal. This door shouldn't be open! Let's hide, Holmes. This place isn't very favorable for that. I hate the idea, but we will have to rely on luck. There! It's locked! We've been locked in! I think that window is large enough for us to squeeze through. This window is well and truly stuck. We'll have to pull it free. I think that window is large enough for us to squeeze through. This window is well and truly stuck. We'll have to pull it free. It's open. But this window is damnably heavy. We need something to keep it wedged open. Good. We can get out of here. After you, my dear fellow. Very well, Holmes. It's time to take action, Watson. Go and distract the brute guarding the door. What? Why don't you do it yourself? You're an expert boxer, after all. It's not a matter of fighting. It's a matter of luring him to me. I see. I imagine that the sedative is for him. Well deduced, Watson. Do something to bring the guard towards me. Good luck, Watson. Uh, sir, would you be so good as to come here?
You again? I've already told you that there's nothing to see here. Understood? Do something to bring the guard towards me. Good luck, Watson. Uh, sir, would you be so good as to come here? Do something to bring the guard towards me. Good luck, Watson. Uh, sir, would you be so good as to come here? No, not that way. We must take them by surprise. Let's get to the corridor by these stairs, Holmes. Anything clever. You're under arrest. Take them away. So be it. Come, Watson. Let us go. But why have we come back to Baker Street? It would have been better to join Baines to interrogate those criminals. No, in the hands of the police, those crooks won't talk and you know it. They risk being hanged. I don't understand anything here. We must explore all our leads. Let us take a look at the map of London. We have arrived. The bishop's nephew lives here? Yes, he rents a ground floor room. 